Hello, uh, my name is Jay Patel and I'm a, uh, a CT surgery fellow here at Virginia Commonwealth University and uh, today I have uh, Dr. Mohamed Khadr, who's Hello. a cardiac surgeon here at VCU and today we'll be talking about vasoplegia. So Dr. Khadr, what is vasoplegia? Vasoplegia is a condition where the vascular tone is significantly less than what normally it is. And the vascular tone in general is maintained by the calcium influx of the smooth muscles of the arterioles. And when you have significantly less vascular tone, there will be a hypotension. And despite a normally working heart, the tissue beds will not get the perfusion that they need mm -hmm. because the blood is just being shunted instead of being going through them properly. Okay. So, Dr. Carter, there are a lot of reasons for vasoplegia, a lot of mechanisms, including intrinsic regulators such as nitric oxide, uh, endo endothelin, acidosis, hypoxia, other extrinsic regulators as well, such as the patient's sympathetic tone and other vasoactive hormones. What are the, the causes that, that drive uh, these homeostatic mechanisms to dysfunction? What are uh, the most common causes that you see for vasoplegia? So, for the cardiac surgeons, the most common is the cytokine development on the Hartman machine or through the patient's primary etiology, for example, endocarditis or dissection. This condition generate so much of cytokines that they completely change the balance at the molecular level on the endothelial cells, mm -hmm. and that leads to complete vasopedia. Okay. Okay. And um, uh, what are certain uh, additional risk factors, would you say, for vasoplegia that a patient may have that makes someone more prone to developing this postoperatively? Absolutely. One would be a prolonged cardiopulmonary bypass time because the longer that you are on the heart and machine, the more amount of the cytokines that the body will generate. Mm -hmm. The other one being the primary etiology for the surgery, as I mentioned, dissections, patients who have endocarditis, Patients who have been on the left ventricle assist device for the reasons that we have not understood very well mm -hmm. also manifest profound vasoplegia once they go on the heart rate machine. And patients who are septic for any reason mm -hmm. also are a high risk category. Besides this, there are also some preponderance for the males and older age patients manifest vasoplegia. Got it, interesting. Okay. So um, how does a patient who is developing vasoplegia or vasoplegic shock, how do they present? What sort of hemodynamic uh, uh, um, parameters are you looking at to come to the diagnosis for this? So first parameter that you see on this patient is they will be hypotensive. And if you look at their cardiac performance, the heart, if it has a normal heart function, will be hyperdynamic. And if you do measure the cardiac output, it will be hyperdynamic. However, if you measure the peripheral vascular resistance, it will be extremely low. So a combination of a normal working heart with decreased heart, decreased cardiac, sorry, decreased uh, blood pressure and a higher cardiac output is characteristic of uh, resolution. Okay. Uh, no, that's great. And um, I can imagine it's probably very difficult in a fresh post-op cardiac surgery patient who may have depressed heart function at baseline to try to tease that etiology from vasoplegia. Um, uh, are there uh, any specific things that you look at to help differentiate between uh, a component of cardiogenic shock versus pure vasoplegic shock or, off, or do you commonly see a mix of the two at times? It is very possible to see a combination of them, but a quick way to differentiate is to get a bedside echocardiogram that will give you two critical information pieces. One would be what is the function of the heart? How is the left ventricle right ventricle is contracting? Mm -hmm. And if you had worked on the valves, it can give you an idea about functioning of the valves. And the second thing it would rule out is any tamponade. Okay. And once mm -hmm. you rule those two things out, then you go on to use your pulmonary artery catheter derived numbers to see what is the cardiac output. Got it. Low versus mm -hmm. high. So once you have a normal heart function, no tamponade, and a high cardiac output, and a significantly low blood pressure, that's the vasoplegia. Got it. Okay, thank you. And lastly, Dr. Cotter, how do you treat vasoplegia? 
first you need to replete the intravascular volume because now you have so much of more space in the small blood vessels in the body. So once the volume repletion is complete, which you could go by your CVP or the pulmonary artery, the diastolic pressure, the wedge pressure, and following that, you could use some alpha agonists, mm -hmm. such as norepinephrine, phenylephrine, dopamine, or Okay. And the non-alpha agonist will be vasopressin, which you can use it in, in, in extreme cases. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Carter. Absolutely.